Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another recent reads on Sunday in which I talk about the books that I finished that I'm still working on and the books that I started. And because last week I didn't film a recent reads but I filmed the tops and flops obviously for January, I will have I have a bit of a backlog, so to speak, of books that I've finished. Uh, so it's the books that I finished within the last two weeks, actually, and not only the previous week. We'll just roll with that. And the first one um, is um, this one, the Louise Edric, The Sentence, uh, published last year, 2021. You remember I had this whole thing about not getting, being able to get the book because um, Louise Edric was the author Spotlight 2020. I read all the books in chronological order, or not all the books, the novels in chronological order together with Terry. Um, and this one, was left over, so to speak, because it was a new release in 2021. Anyway, finally, we read it um, in January. And I liked it, but I didn't love it as much as a lot of other people that I saw uh, on BookTube. So this book is set in the present day, and we follow uh, a, a middle age kind of woman not in her 40s, so it's probably not yet middle-aged, uh, who has just been released from prison, Tuki, um, and uh, we learn why she was in prison, which is rather a hilarious kind of crime, um, and then she starts uh, working in a bookstore in uh, Minneapolis, and the bookstore is owned by a woman called Louise, who doesn't really feature that much, thankfully, because I really don't like that. Louise Edric owns a bookstore in Minneapolis. Um, but never mind, just a side note. And the bookstore is haunted because there is this customer, Flora, who used to come regularly and then she died and is haunting the bookstore and Tuki wants to know why and what happened to Flora and there's also a relationship that Tuki has um, uh, with uh, uh and the man has a daughter. and So there's also family stuff. I don't want to go into spoiler territory. But I just didn't feel that there was enough there. There, uh, The haunting was interesting. But finally, the solution, why and what happened, I felt was rather... Um, a little bit trite. Um, that's too no. That's too strong a word. But it it was just a little bit, um, yeah, convenient. Um, so I didn't like that. But my main issue, and that is something that is really personal, um, as books are always personal, of course. And it it is the reason that a lot of people love the book so much because um, it's set now. So there's also mentioning because. Minneapolis of uh, George Floyd, what happened, the aftermath, and uh, the uh, corona epidemic. And for me, especially the corona thing, it just doesn't work. If we are still in the middle of it, it for some reason, this really takes me out of the suspension of disbelief because it's real, which doesn't make any sense because the book is supposed to be real. But for some reason, if it's too real, if I'm really living it, it just doesn't work. But like I said, for a lot of people, they loved it. So give it a try if you're interested in, you know, this kind of uh, a little bit, sp not spooky, but haunting and indigenous lives and bookstores and set in the present day. Give it a give it a go. Um, the next book uh, that I haven't talked about that I also finished end of uh, January, so week before last, was the new author spotlight. Susan Sontag is the new author spotlight uh, of 2021, 2022, and this is her first book, The Benefactor. Uh, Susan Sontag obviously is mainly known, I would say, for her essays on photography, on illness, but she also wrote fiction, not that much, but she started out as a fiction author. Uh, the Benefactor was published in 1963, um, and again, it's certainly not going to be my favorite Susan Sontag book. Um, we follow um, a man, a Hippolyte, 
he looks back, he's now in his 60s or something, and he looks back on his life um, as a benefactor, helping other people, very, very roughly helping other people. I didn't find the life that engaging or interesting that he talks about, you know, the relationship that he has and the the artists that he meets. And um, he seems to be quite more a vessel of something than that actually his personality comes to light in this book. And it was heavily, heavily, heavily philosophical. Freud, there's a lot of dreams. Sean, don't ever touch this book because you hate it when <laughs> dreams are uh, uh, told in a book. And there are like 20 dreams in this book, at least, not more probably. Because what he does, he wants to uh, have his life influenced by his dreams. And I think it's a really a book um, of its time. Um, I back then the whole Freud thing and the dream interpretation was much more, I would say, still an issue, even though it was the sixties. Um, and it, yeah, it just didn't didn't really interest me. So it's not bad, and it's well written. Um, there has some interesting topics, but the story as such uh, just didn't really work for me. And this was, by the way. Um, Kim from Middle of the Book March uh, said in the beginning of January that she might want to read this book with me, but she tried a couple of uh, chapters or first 20 pages and it was not for her. So we didn't end up buddy reading it. And I, I can definitely understand that. But if you're interested in Susan Sontag's work, like I am, I just want to read her, uh, the, the books that she published, then it's an interesting book. Then the next one, and that was finished just on the edge between January and February, and that's why it didn't uh, make it anymore, for instance, in the tops and flops uh, of January, because it could have been a top, a nonfiction top, and that is Amiya Srinivasan's The Right to Sex, which was published last year. I talked about this book already quite extensively when I was in the middle of it. I read this together with uh, Kathleen from Kathleen Ann, who is, yeah, back on BookTube. I'm so happy about that, Kathleen. I can't stop saying that. Um, and it is a, a collection of essays, actually. So it's not, the, the book is not written as a book, but it, there are essays that have been previously published, but all around this topic of sexual relationships, it's talking about sexual violence uh, towards women. Uh, in a feminist, it's a feminist book. I mean, yeah. Uh, but also, the right to sex is one. The title of one essay where uh, uh, she talks about a couple of uh, rape cases uh, where men um, uh, say that they feel. Uh, they have, you know, they are uh, put down by women who don't want to have sex with them. She also talks about um, other aspects of the sexual relationship. And I felt this was an excellent look on the topic, uh, tackling also some of the more um, difficult themes around this topic. For instance, she extensively talks about uh, whether or not it's important that there are false rape ac accusations. So she is not afraid of talking about things that for feminists are often difficult to talk about. And uh, I didn't tell you anything about her. She is an, um, an English, she works in, 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 in the UK as a professor of philosophy. But don't be put off. <laughs> <laughs> the book is extremely well written. She can make, she can craft an argument really well, but also in a way that it's not, you know, uh, philosophically difficult if you don't have any background in philosophy, that it's either boring or difficult. No, not at all. So I, I can, if you're interested in the topic, if you want to read feminist literature, recent 
feminist literature, this is, I can highly, highly recommend this uh, nonfiction book. And we stay with nonfiction. And the first book that I actually finished in February last week uh, was another uh, like I said, nonfiction and memoir. I came all this way to meet you, uh, writing myself home by Jamie Attenberg, uh, published 1st of January, I think, or the 2nd of January, but obviously in January. I came across this book um, on Sonia's channel from an enthusiastic reader, and she uh, reviewed this book and really liked it. And it sounded interesting. I hadn't heard about it, or I hadn't yeah, it, it didn't cross my, my path before that. And I bought it and I read it and I really liked it. I have to say, Jamie Attenberg is a writer. Um, her most famous novel is probably The Middlesteens, which was published, I think, about eight years ago or something. Um, I quite liked it. But I didn't love it. And I think I only read one other book by Jamie Attenberg. I, I don't think she is my kind of writer. Um, but still, I love books where writers talk about how they came to be the writer that they are. And she had quite an interesting life because she was very um, um, on the move all the time for 20 years. She didn't even own a bed frame, as she said, but only a mattress. Um, and she, you know, she moved to eight different apartments in 20 different states, something like that. And that's a life that is so completely different from mine that I find it interesting to read about. So this is, as a memoir, very much focusing on her life. It's not having broader reflections, or at least not a lot of them. So you should be really, if, if this, you, if you're thinking about reading this, it's only something for you if you really like to read this very, these very personal memoirs. Um, so I wouldn't call it navel gazy, uh, but it, it is not tackling a broader issue and then, you know, talking about that life within the broader issue, other than you could say the the home, uh, finding a home, you know, writing myself home, because in the end, she settles down somewhere, at least for now. But uh, yeah, I find it really entertaining. It's well writ was well written. And I have a sweet spot for books about write of by writers about their writing career. So it was a good tip, Sonia. Thank you very much. Um, then on to the book that I'm still reading. I'm not going to talk about it because I didn't, uh, let's go a little bit back. Marie Tatar, the heroine with the thousand and one faces about looking at not heroes, but heroines through history, because I didn't even read one single page. So I'm just going to put this down. Um, and then I have uh, two books to talk to you about that I've started last week. Uh, the first one is a buddy read, uh, because it's Black History Month, obviously. So I'm reading Beloved by Toni Morrison. And uh, I forgot the publication date. I mean, I have all the publication dates, and of course, the last couple, the the almost last book I forgot. It's 1987. Um, this is one of her most famous books um, about a former slave, Sati Seth, uh, S E T H E, and her daughter Denver, um, and the friend slash relationship. Uh, Paul uh, comes to live with them, and then we learn about their life back when Sethi was still a slave and what happened. She had more children, two of the boys, they left the home after the grandmother uh, died. It's a complicated story. It's not told in any linear fashion. And I, Heidi and I talked about it. Did I say that somebody read with Heidi for my reading life? Probably not, but... If I did, I'm going to say it again. It's a buddy read with Heidi from my reading life. Uh, and we talked about the structure of the book because it's quite um, non-linear. And sometimes it's not obvious where we are. Um, it's a third-person omniscient perspective. So we get all kinds of 
points of views, which doesn't make it easier sometimes. But I felt that the structure really served the book because this shattered life of this woman and her family because of slavery. It has, it's quite violent. Um, so if you are afraid of that, you should look into it, whether it's for you. Uh, but it, it's, yeah, I, I will see how, how I feel about it in the end. I, I should warn you, I'm going to put this down now um, uh, because I have to scratch my nose again, um, that I, I'm i one of the very few people who is not absolutely in love with Toni Morrison's work. I really liked uh, Song of Salomon. I didn't get along with uh, Sula. I didn't get along with Tar Baby. I didn't get along with Love. I didn't get along with... Uh, God help the child. Um, and that especially had to do with the way uh, women and relationships, their relationships with men were depicted because they are all quite similar. And the women in God help the child, for instance, there is an abusive relationship and then the man leaves and the whole book is about the woman trying to find her man and get him back the abusive asshole. I, I, I'm I not in for that. So I have, I'm not, yeah, one of those people who really love Toni Morrison's work, but Song of Solomon I did. And so I thought maybe Beloved, uh, you know, would be one of the books that I loved. And of course, I wanted to read uh, more of her work to really make up my mind. And Black History Month seemed a good uh, place to read a book by a Black author. And to read it with somebody else, that always helps. Anyway, enough babbling. And the other book by a black author is nonfiction. And I'm reading this for the book Naturalist Book Club. And that is Undrowned, uh, Black Feminist Lessons from Marine Mammals by Alexis Pauline Gums. Um, and this book was published in 2020. Uh, it's a short little essay collection where the... Uh, author, a poet, but also a, a scientist, I think, or at least she is scientifically inclined. And she looks uh, on marine mammals and how they live. It's, it's the chapters are called breathing, listening. Um, so it, it is about those creatures, those animals, uh, our cousins. And she compares and contrasts it with the human life. Um, I'm only, yeah, not even a third in. So I, so far I'm liking it, um, but it is quite, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what the book wants to do. So we'll, we'll see where I end up, but it's, it's certainly something different. And uh, the book naturalist uh, book club pick, like I said, for February. So these were the the catch up for the books that I've read uh, or I finished within the last two weeks, and the one book that is still not going anywhere, and two books that I've started. Thank you very much for watching. I hope yet you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking forward uh, to your comments, and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.